Hey everyone, welcome to Crypto News Simplified. My name is Ali, and today is March 7th, 2022. So to jump right into the news, we had a huge story uh, come out on March 6th this weekend, just yesterday. Um, and basically, Anton Nell, who is a senior solutions architect for the Phantom Foundation, tweeted this, and I quote, Andra Andre, and he means Andre Crone, or Andre Crone, Andre and I have decided that we are closing the chapter of contributing to the DeFi slash crypto space. There are around 25 apps and services that we are terminating on the 3rd of April 2022. Most notably, Yearn Finance, Keeper Network, Multichain, Chainless, Solidly, Bribe.crv. Unlike the previous Building and DeFi Sucks Rage Quits, this is not a knee-jerk reaction to the hate received from releasing a project, but a decision that has been coming for a while now. Thank you to everyone that supported us over the past few years. Now, this sent everyone on Twitter into a frenzy. Um, people started freaking out. They started withdrawing all their tokens from these protocols. Um, you know, they started mass selling. A lot of the coins, like, dipped a lot. Uh, if you're not fam familiar with Andre Cronje, he's a part of the Phantom Foundation Technology Council. Um, he, he's most notably famous for creating Yearn Finance, um, and he's huge. He's like a godfather developer in the cryptocurrency space. Um, I think really, from my perspective, uh, he was working with uh, Daniela Sesta of Wonderland, and they were working on coming up with Solidly on Phantom, and then everything came out about Sifu, and he and Andre distanced himself from Daniel, and uh, ever since then, he just started acting weird, started posting memes on Twitter, uh, then he deleted his Twitter just last week, um, and now this information is coming out. So immediately, a lot of the protocols on Phantom went into, uh, you know, pretty much a uh, crowd control and started tweeting that that they're not closing you know like liquid driver uh tomb uh even the phantom foundation themselves they came out and posted this tweet they said we're extremely grateful to andre for all he did for crypto as a whole however phantom isn't and never was a one-man team there are 40 plus people working at phantom the team's working on consensus, and more recently, middleware have been doing so for years, and the team continues to grow. He was a big picture guy, working closely with CEO Michael F. Kong, laying the groundwork, especially during the tough times of 2018. Therefore, the development of Phantom won't be impacted by Andre's decision. Uh, big things are coming as scheduled. So then they're talking about what they're scheduling uh, to uh, to come, but um. Excuse me. So yeah, a lot of a lot of the protocols, uh, their their token price dipped as people dumped their coins, um, and they all came out and said, you know, that they're not shutting down. And then it seemed to come out that clarification that they're not shutting down these all of these uh, all these protocols that they listed. You're in finance, keeper network, and all that, but they're just handing over the reins to other developers and other people who have been working on it. Um, as far as I know, Andre has distanced himself from Yearn Finance a long time ago um, and from some of these other networks. Uh, Solidly.exchange was his most recent baby that came out and it had a lot of problems with it. Um, it didn't, it, it wasn't as a good of a release as I think he wanted it to be and as people expected it and hyped it up to be. So uh, yeah, this was a huge story. So it looks like An Andre Kronje and Kronje, excuse me, and Anton Nell are both taking a break from DeFi, and as they say, they're quitting for good. Um, which I don't think they will. I think uh, just the stress of people just got to them. But if you're a developer and if you built all these great protocols, it seems like this is your passion. So. They're probably just burnt out for now, and I, I hope they come back uh, with a stronger passion and just a clearer head and, and thicker skin, you know, so that, you know, the the people won't get them down, you know. Hopefully next time the trolls won't get them too down. All right, so moving on. Uh, Pangolin. Pangolin is a protocol on the Avalanche Network. Uh, they tweeted out today, starting off this week with a new farm of Tomb and AVAX on Pangolin. Pangolin Dex. So Tomb Finance is offering the first cross-chain algorithmic token, Tomb on Phantom Matic AVAX pegged to FTM. 
So that's cool that they're coming out with this farm uh, sometime this week. They didn't give a day, but just, you know, continue to check their Twitter or continue to check their website to see uh, when it's up and running. So it's cool to see Tomb branching out, doing new things, especially on another chain like Avalanche. Up next, we have Chevron files a new metaverse trademark to offer NFTs and virtual energy. Um, now, this was pretty cool, but pretty weird. Um, if you look at this, they're going to be they 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 filed a trademark to to offer NFTs and internet marketplace crypto collectibles as well as convenience store products, natural gas products, and renewable energy products. Which I find this last part kind of weird. Like, are you gonna have to you know buy yourself a Chevron truck in the metaverse and then buy it? you know, gas <laughs> or, or like plug it in to charge it electrically and pay for that in the metaverse. That just seems silly. Um, I don't see the point of having natural gas products and renewable energy products. Like, like it just doesn't make sense. So I thought that was weird, but it just shows you more and more companies are getting involved in the metaverse and in NFTs. Up next, on Secret, uh, if you guys are familiar with the blockchain Secret, um, they came out with this Medium article. Are you legendary? Secret Labs Legend DAO goes for the guild. Guild or gold. <laughs> so Legend DAO is going to be an NFT platform on the Secret network. Um, and it seems to be like a gamify type thing where the more you buy and trade and make NFTs, you'll get to level up your avatar. You'll get to... Um, You'll get to to go do like different um, missions and stuff and have a guild and everything and earn rewards uh, for staking and for accomplishing different missions. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, this seems to be the first of its kind of NFT marketplace that is going to be doing this. So if you're a fan of NFTs, if you're a fan of Secret, go check it out and uh, see if you like it. Up next, this is another big story that came out today. Biden executive order on cryptocurrency expected this week. Now, Biden uh, and the White House had said that they were going to come out with an executive order on cryptocurrency uh, a couple weeks ago, and then everything happened with Ukraine and Russia, and that all got put on pause. And I guess now he's coming out again and saying that he's going to follow through and unleash this executive order, I guess because a lot of people are concerned about the sanctions placed on Russia, that Russia is just going to evade it with cryptocurrency, especially since Russia recently made cryptocurrency legal tender, you know, and they made a law uh, accepting it and everything and, and working it into their framework of their, you know, their laws. Um, so according to inside sources, you know how reliable those can be, uh, this order is expected to describe what government agencies, including the Treasury Department, need to do to develop policies and regulations on digital currencies. So it seems like he's just going to be telling different agencies like, hey, come up with a law regulating crypto. Uh, I don't think he's really going to be like making a law about crypto himself, but kind of just passing the buck and coming up with a deadline for these agencies to come up with a law for crypto. Um, they're saying, and I quote, it is expected to include a request for the State Department to ensure that American cryptocurrency laws are aligned with those of U.S. allies and will ask the Financial Stability Oversight Council, which monitors the, the stability of the U.S. financial system, to study illicit finance concerns. So it's also, some people are saying it's going to be talking about a CBDC, so again, a central bank digital currency for America. Uh, the Federal Reserve had issued a paper about the topic in January, um, asking different uh, exchanges and different influential people to give them feedback about the risk and the benefits of having a CBDC in America. So I'm curious to see what this thing's going to say. Uh, if anything, I just hope it makes taxes a lot easier for everyone involved in crypto and DeFi. And uh, that's that's just my main goal <laughs> as far as this is concerned. But we'll see what, what Biden signs. Up next, this was a pretty cool news. Virginia Senate passes bill allowing state banks to offer Bitcoin custody services. Now, this will be a law saying pretty much you give 
pretty much you let a bank hold your Bitcoin for you. Uh, they would be like your wallet, you know. Um, so are that they would hold all the Bitcoin. It'd be similar to an ETF, and you just like buy a portion of uh what they hold, and then you you gain um interest, you know, based on when the value of Bitcoin goes up, you would get that paid out to you. I imagine it's something like that. Um, I haven't read the bill. It's House Bill 263. So if you want to go online and read the bill, you can. But basically, it's just going over what the banks need to do in order to legally be allowed to offer custodial services for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's going to be a lot of paperwork for the banks. They're going to have to carefully examine the risk involved in offering the services and write up papers to ensure that they have uh, the proper protocols. It says here that a bank has to have the 26 adequate protocols in place to effectively manage risk and comply with applicable laws. So it seems like it's going to be a lot of work for the banks, but I'll be curious to see if any banks do it. Uh, personally, I would never use a bank to hold my Bitcoin. I might as well just keep my cash in the bank. Uh, Bitcoin and crypto is all about being your own bank. But if you're interested in this, this is great for the older people who don't understand uh, crypto that well, blockchain technology. So this, this would probably be a great asset for them. Up next, Adobe's Behance adds support for Solana NFTs. Now, Behance is Adobe's artistic showcase platform. Uh, they already allow you to upload Ethereum NFTs as your profile picture and to show them off, but now they've added support for the Phantom Wallet and uh, Solana-based NFTs. And I guess they made this decision based on the uh, eco-friendliness of Solana. You know, that doesn't require all this electricity to mine and all that. Uh, Solana is a proof of stake and proof of history uh, blockchain. So that's what makes it, uh, you know, green, green friendly, green energy friendly. Up next, Aussie NFT startup platform Immutable raises uh, 200 million US dollars at 2.5 which gives them a 2.5 billion valuation. So if you're not familiar with Immutable, uh, they came out with Gods Unchained and Guild of Guardians, which are some huge uh, blockchain games in the crypto space. And so they they recently did this uh, event to raise this funding and they raised $200 million, which they are going to use, they say, let's see, they're going to use to hire more people um, yeah, in addition of 200 new employees they're going to hire and they're going to work on more development of uh, their blockchain, which is the Immutable X IMX, which is a, uh, a scaling solution for Ethereum. And it's mostly for games, uh, you know, so that you can play games, trade NFTs with super low fees and fast transaction times. So they're going to be using a part of that money again to hire 200 new employees and to just further the development of their blockchain and further the development of other crypto games that I guess they have uh, in the works or have ideas for. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a, you know, I'm, I'm very bullish on, on blockchain games and uh, this company is already established in the blockchain gaming. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely check them out and see what, what they will accomplish coming up. Up next, we have Binance launches fiat crypto platform Biffany. Biffinity, I guess. So this is going to be a uh, fiat to crypto payment platform. So this will help link businesses, merchants, and users to crypto and the blockchain. And the launch coincides with increased regulatory scrutiny over crypto transactions. So this will help uh, merchants and businesses accept crypto. And I believe it'll work like... Uh, like BitPay, where it will automatically convert maybe the crypto to fiat or vice versa, and uh, allowing for people to to be able to pay in crypto. So that's pretty cool. And um, Helen High, who's the president of Bifinity, said, we at Bifinity see greater demand to improve fiat to crypto on ramps to bridge the gap between the, the traditional finance industry and the decentralized and centralized crypto economy. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Binance is always putting their hands in all the pots and looking to expand and just help bring on that mass adoption we're all waiting for. Up next, Sam 
Sam Bankman frees FTX crypto exchange to expand into Europe after winning Cyprus license. So FTX is a huge uh, US-based uh, crypto exchange and they are now uh, going to be operating in Europe. They already have an office in Switzerland, I believe. Yeah, Switzerland. And now they just got an operating license in Cyprus. So they look to be bridging out to uh, the European economic area in the Middle East so that people can have access to derivatives, options, and volatil volatil sorry, volatility products, among others. Um, so that's pretty cool. So they, they just completed a $400 million funding round in January, and now the company is valued at $32 billion U.S. dollars. So that's just pretty cool that uh, more crypto exchanges are expanding and giving people access to uh, cryptocurrency. Up next, we have the Hive blockchain announces landmark deal to buy new high-performing ASIC chips from Intel and a 100 milliwatt, or I guess megawatt, renewable energy deal in Texas. So this is pretty huge. Um, Texas did say it did want to be like the Bitcoin, um, the Bitcoin uh, mining central of the world, you know, capital of the world. And if we see that other blockchains are moving there to mine and stuff, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it's cool that they got this deal with, uh, it's cool that they got this deal. Um, so it's saying here that they'll be, they're going to purchase these Intel, uh, new high performing ASIC chips that will, that will be incorporated into state of the art mining equipment that will be custom built for Hive. Um, so I'm sure they paid a lot of money for this because right now computer chips are, um, are hard to get and they're very expensive so the fact that they were able to secure a deal with such a huge company as intel just shows you uh you know that they're they're not playing around um and they're also looking to host 100 megawatt of mining capacity in one of their new texas renewable energy data center facilities this facility would be their first mining operation in the united states so that's pretty cool uh, and you can read more about that uh, online so up next and this is our last story of the day Trezor halted wallet shipments to Russia and Ukraine so Trezor uh, store um, their their cold storage wallet have halted their wallets from shipping out to not only Russia but Ukraine and from their website they said Due to the current situation in Ukraine and Russia, shipping to these countries has been temporarily suspended beyond our control. While we hope that the situation improves quickly, we are currently unsure when we will be able to resume shipping to Russia and Ukraine. So I don't know if they did this out of their own free will um, uh, because of what Russia is doing or it just could be that they just can't get their product in there due to everything going on. Um, so that's that, that if you live in Russia or Ukraine, you won't be able to get, uh, Trezor wallets. So from what I know, you'll still be able to purchase Ledger. Um, but I recommend, uh, everyone should have one of these cold storage wallets and you should be using it. It's the safest way to keep your crypto. Uh, if you don't want one of these, the other safest way is to get, a uh, uh, a hard drive an external hard drive and to download each blockchain, um, and to keep it on there yourself but you have to do that manually and update it manually and it's a pain in the butt and treasure and ledger makes it so much easier uh i personally have ledger and i love it i've never tried treasure but uh, maybe one day i will so that's basically it for tonight uh i went pretty fast but you know i'm not feeling too hot so i thank you all for watching uh please like and subscribe comment and share and remember i do this show every day monday through friday around 9 p.m. Eastern uh, Eastern time. And uh, yeah, so I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night and hopefully I'll feel much better. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night.